All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, we are going to work with a matrix A, a two by two matrix A, which we'll find has complex eigenvalues. And what we want to do is identify an invertible matrix P and an associated matrix C, which is gonna have a little bit more symmetry maybe than the matrix that we started with so that we can um, identify that A is similar to this matrix C and we're able to convert from one to the other by multiplying by P and its inverse. So let's consider in this case matrix A, which is a two by two matrix where the first column of A is minus one, five, and the second column is minus one, minus five. And so first we wanna go ahead and find the eigenvalues for this matrix. And if they're complex, then we should see that they're gonna come in conjugate pairs. So we wanna find the characteristic polynomial by taking the determinant of A minus lambda I. So that means we're gonna take lambda and subtract it from the diagonal entries of A. So we get a minus one minus lambda and a minus five minus lambda along the diagonal and the off diagonal entries, they don't change. And computing the determinant of this matrix we get uh, the quantity minus one minus lambda times the quantity minus five minus lambda. This is the product of the diagonal entries minus minus one times five, which is the product of the off diagonal entries. So this we can group terms in simplify to the characteristic equation lambda squared plus six lambda plus 10 is equal to zero. And we cannot factor this quadratic over the real numbers. So using the quadratic formula, we can find that lambda is gonna equal minus three plus or minus i. So we have two complex roots um, to this characteristic equation, and these are gonna to correspond to the two complex eigenvalues for matrix A. Minus three, minus i, and it's conjugate minus three plus i. So in order to identify this matrix P and this matrix C, let's go ahead and find uh, an eigenspace for one of these eigenvalues. Okay, so I would like to do a kind of analogous sort of diagonalization of this matrix A, which because it has complex eigenvalues, we're not gonna be able to perfectly diagonalize it. Um, but Let's go ahead and take the eigenvalue. One of them that we found was minus three minus i. And let's find a basis for the eigenspace of this eigenvalue by solving the equation a minus lambda i x is equal to the zero vector. So let's go ahead and solve this equation and solving this equation using our lambda, which is minus three minus i, so if I subtract that from the first diagonal entry, which was minus one, I would get minus one minus a minus three. So that gives us two. And then I'm gonna subtract the minus i, which gives me a plus i. I've got a minus one over here. That doesn't change. I still have a five in the other off diagonal entry. And then for this last entry, we would take minus five minus a minus three. So we would get minus five plus three which gives us the minus two here. And then we have a minus, the minus i, which gives us a plus i. And then we can write out the corresponding system of equations that's equivalent to this matrix equation. So the first equation would be two plus i times x1 minus x2 is equal to zero. And the second equation would be five times x1 plus the quantity minus two plus i times x2 is equal to zero. And because lambda equals minus three i minus one is an eigenvalue, these two equations should be redundant. One should be a multiple of the other. So um, let me just pick the second equation and use that to solve for x1. Um, and solving this equation for x1 gives us the solution that as long as x1 is equal to the quantity two fifths minus i over five, times x2, that is going to be an eigenvector for the eigenvalue, lambda is equal to minus three minus i. 
And so to get a nicer basis, maybe that doesn't involve any fractions, we can set our free variable x2 equal to example 5. And doing that is going to give us an eigen, a basis for the eigenspace, which is going to be 2 minus i as the top entry, 5 as the bottom entry. So we're just canceling the 5s off when I set x2 equals 5. Um, and that means we've set x2 is equal to 5. That's where the 5 comes from over here. And again, this comes from the corresponding value of x1 when we set x2 equal to 5. And we can take this complex vector and write it as its real part, which is the vector 2, 5, plus i times its imaginary part, which is the vector minus 1, 0. So now we've got a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue, lambda is equal to minus 3, minus i. And now we're able to use this vector v to construct a matrix p that's going to help us almost diagonalize this matrix. And the theorem that we have already looked at that said, well, the matrix that is going to allow us to find a similar matrix C that has the form, the diagonal entries are going to be the real part of the eigenvalue. So in this case, our A's are going to be minus 3. And then the off diagonal entries are related to the imaginary part. So in this case, uh, this would be minus 1, and this is going to be positive 1. Uh, and the matrix P that's going to allow us to identify this similar matrix is going to have the first column, which is going to be the real part of the eigen of a basis for the eigenspace. And the second column is going to be the imaginary part of a basis for the eigenspace. So plugging in the values that we know for the based on the eigen um, vector that we found for this eigenvalue, we can see that the matrix A is going to equal the real part of the eigenvector uh, basis, which was 2, 5. The second column is the imaginary part, which is minus 1, 0. And our matrix C, in this case, is has diagonal entries of minus 3. Uh, the off-diagonal entry in the top row is the imaginary part, which is minus 1. And then in the other entry, remaining entry, we change the sign of the imaginary part to 1. And then we multiply on the right by the inverse of this matrix P. And you can verify that this product is going to give us back matrix A, which had the first column minus 1, 5, and the second column minus 1, minus 5.